Hi, I'm John Longstreet with another edition of PRLA Short Takes, and I'm so excited today to have with me Chip Rogers. Chip's the president and CEO of the American Hotel and Lodging Association. He's been a huge friend of PRLA and all of the other partner state associations, and it's so critical to our industry, particularly at this difficult time when we don't know how we're going to get all the hotels to the other side of this crisis. So, Chip, H and LA and you have put together something called the Roadmap for Recovery. Which is, which is going to be key to getting uh, to the survival of our industry. Can you talk for a few moments about that? Yeah, thanks, John. I appreciate it. And uh, thanks for all that you're doing. Look, the, no one does this alone. This is truly a partnership among the, the states, all the states, plus what we're trying to work on at the federal level. And, and how do we convince people um, of the things that we need them to be convinced of? And that's really what the Roadmap to Recovery is all about. So when we began this process, uh, wow, way back in, February, uh, and we were certainly among industries the first to be hit, um, we realized that it was going to be bad, but no one knew how long the recovery would be. And I would almost argue we still don't know that, but we do know it's longer than we thought back in February. And so lawmakers, as they began to look at it and say, you know, what do we need to provide small businesses? They too had a timeline in mind. And that timeline for, for most lawmakers, at least in, in Congress, was somewhere between eight to 10 weeks. In fact, if you look at the legislation that they passed, um, they talked about full job recovery uh, by the end of June, and then the unemployment benefits that they offered, uh, the extended benefits would run out in July. So you can kind of get a sense of, of where they thought we would be for full recovery. Um, we now know that's not the case. Um, the industry has faced uh, something like we've never faced before. And so there's a multitude of phases of how we get from here to there when there seems to be moving further and further away. Um, first and foremost, how do we make sure hotels don't go out of business? And I have to repeat this again and again to my friends in the media, because there's always a lot of focus on the employees and we are, are very focused on how do we save this incredible employee base that we have in hospitality. Um, without them, nothing happens. But the reality is, is if, if a business goes out of business, there's no job for them to come back to. And so when we think about lifelines and, and, and how, we get, how we protect this industry, first and foremost, we need to protect the individual businesses, the tens of thousands of small business owners whose livelihoods are tied up into this. And I remind people of that all the time. These are small business owners that have been working for this for, for decades. They've poured everything they have into the, creating these small businesses. Our industry is not like the airline industry. We're not like the cruise ship industry. We're tens of thousands of small business owners. And so they're just trying to survive. So when, when we look at Congress and we say, what can you do to help us? Right now, we're still in that mode of, we need survival help. We need hotels to make it to the next level. The second step, and it's also one we've already begun to work on in recovery, is convincing that consumers, that hotels are, are safe and clean. Um, if consumers don't come back, none of, the, none of the rest of this matters, right? We can get all the, help we can, all the help in the world, but consumers have to be confident. In fact, we know, according to Morning Consult, that uh, when asked what is the number one concern you have about traveling again, 87% said their number one concern was, was safety and cleanliness. So we launched Safe Stay, which is, yeah, 87%. All, I mean, you never see polls that big, uh, right? <laughs> politicians, politicians wish they had 87%. So you never see that, but, but it's almost universal on the minds of consumers. And um, we launched Safe Stay, which I'm proud to say uh, has been endorsed by uh, PRLA. Thank you for that. And, and 48 other states. Um, among with all of the major associations in, in our industry, um, U.S. Travel, Global Business, AHOA, Latino Hotel Association, on and on and on, have all endorsed this as kind of the universal standards that all hotels uh, can live up to. And we did that for a number of reasons, but most importantly is to remind guests that hotels are very, very safe and very clean. And remind them of the steps we take every single day, time and again, to make sure they're clean. So once we have the hotel owner um, with the ability to keep his or her doors open and we have the guest uh, understanding that they're safe, I think, think the third and, and, and last part of this to the road to recovery is convincing people to travel, right? That travel is a wonderful part of their life. We started the Take Me Back campaign, which is a social media campaign designed to have people remember what it is they love so much about hotels, what it is they love so much about travel. Um, that has gotten overwhelming response, and we're happy about that. We see some of the leisure spots across the U.S. Uh, really beginning to see some recovery. 
Um, but we're going to have to take many steps after this. So it won't just be leisure travel here in the summer. We've got to have business travel come back in the fall. And then we've got to have meetings and conventions already being planned for next year so that those convention center hotels are filled up again. If we can do these three things, leisure travel now, business travel uh, late fall, early winter, and convention travel next year, uh, then I think we'll speed up this recovery a little bit. But as it stands right now, we're not looking to get back to full, full speed until uh, late 2022. That's a really good roadmap for recovery. And what I love about it is it's really a roadmap. It's not just a, uh, a bunch of things thrown against the wall. It's well thought out. It's thought out in the categories that we need to improve in. And as you commented on how long the recovery take, you and I both remember that after the tragedy of September 11th, it was 18 to 24 month recovery. And by all accounts, this is at least twice, if not three times as bad as what it was back then. So we have to be prepared for that. A lot of, a lot of people don't recognize that 50% of the travel at the hotels nationwide is from corporate travel too. Leisure will return more quickly, but corporate's gonna take a longer time to get back. Well, I'm really excited about the work that you've done, you and the fantastic team in Washington at the HNLA and the terrific board of directors that you have. The support that you've given for us in Pennsylvania and I know in the other states has been, in the hotel industry has been phenomenal. So I love our partnership. Um, there's not a lot of good news these days, but one of the pieces of good news is that you have a clear grasp of what it's gonna to take to get us to the other side. And I think together we can get a lot of our hotels there, the vast majority of them there. Well, thank you, John. And look, it's, it, it, you, you can't succeed in life without partners. And what you and PRLA are doing and what we're doing at HLA, that partnership is, is as strong as any. And together, I know we will come through this um, if we continue to work together. So yes. thanks. Well, thanks, Chip. You were supposed to be uh, with us in June live and in person. And obviously, that's not going to happen. And we appreciate your willingness to do that. But we'll get you back into Pennsylvania soon. Thanks for taking the time to be on Short Takes today. It's great to see you as always. Thanks. That's it for another edition of PRLA Short Takes. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you again next time.